So you've been doing some 3D printing and you might have been thinking, should I get another one? Today we discuss some obvious and not so obvious reasons for and against. One year ago, I made a video speaking honestly about your options when buying your first 3D printer. This year, we're assuming that you have access to at least one and you are considering expanding. As much as I love 3D printing, the answer isn't always yes. In this video, we'll discuss pros and cons, as well as scenarios that might steer you towards what to get, if anything. To make an informed decision, I think it's best to start with our current situation. The premise of this video assumes you already have access to 3D printing in one way or another. And that means you know one of the truths of 3D printing is that they are not user-friendly appliances for the masses. Beyond that, here are some scenarios you might find yourself in. Do you have access to a 3D printer at school or work and you want your own for home? Many years ago, this was the case for me. I was running a MakerBot replicator one at my school and soon after ended up buying my first 3D printer for home, a Solidoodle 2. Maybe you own a cheap 3D printer that you've already heavily modified and you're looking for another printer to treat as a new project. Well, I was also in this scenario once upon a time as well modifying that solid oodle too, starting with basics like adding a part cooling fan, but ending up redesigning most of the printer, creating a series of quick release extruders, etching my own custom heated PCB bed, and even replacing the rubber belts with fishing line. If you want to learn about some of these crazy mods, I've got a video on that topic. Eventually, I ran into limitations I couldn't upgrade around, stripped the printer down, and used the parts in other projects. Maybe you've got a cheap 3D printer that's constantly breaking down and quite frankly you're tired of it. Depending on the nature of the breakdowns, it may or may not be a good idea to upgrade, more on this later. It could be you're in the opposite situation where you already have a reliable 3D printer to the point that you're unwilling to pull it apart and have a play. My Prusa Mark III I left stock for a very long time for this reason. It just worked and I didn't want to tinker with it so I did that with other machines. Maybe you're someone who uses 3D printers to generate income. Therefore, if a 3D printer goes down, it's costing you money and you want to add more for redundancy. If you're building a print farm, more printers can often be better, particularly if that means you have spares ready to go. Another common scenario is that you're looking to expand your manufacturing capabilities over what you currently have. It might be that your current 3D printer has quite a small build volume. So you're looking to add something that will allow you to create larger parts. Or maybe you want to experiment with filaments that warp such as ABS or nylon. So a printer that's enclosed from factory will allow you to create those nice warp free parts. I'd say that any of those scenarios are a good enough reason to expand apart from maybe one. And that's the scenario of expanding on a 3D printer that's constantly breaking down. Just to repeat, 3D printers are not user friendly appliances suitable for the masses. Some 3D prints can go spectacularly wrong. But if print after print is failing because you haven't actually put in the time to understand what the problem is, then there's a good chance those same problems will follow you to any new 3D printer that you acquire. If you've thoroughly researched the problem and you completely understand that your current 3D printer is the limitation, then that's okay. If you haven't put in the time to learn how your slicer works and you still can't get a good first layer, then the money you spend on another 3D printer might end up being money just thrown away. Assuming you're not throwing money at a lack of effort, the next question we can ask is what value will another 3D printer add for you? And if you're in one of those previous scenarios, the answer might be clear cut, such as additional capabilities, your own personal access to 3D printing at home, a more reliable way to be productive, make more money if you're printing for profit, an enjoyable new hobby or project to undertake, or maybe just be able to make some more stuff. But even if one or more of these fit for you, you still need to be honest about it. For instance, if you're looking to add manufacturing volume, there's no point adding a second 3D printer unless your existing ones are already at max capacity and going non-stop. So if you can legitimately add value with another 3D printer, we can move on to the next question, which is do you actually have the time, money and space required? The money question is probably the simplest. 3D printer prices are well known and you can determine with your significant other if you can really afford to buy one. If you can't actually afford that new enclosed printer, perhaps there's a cheaper option such as a pop-up enclosure. 
and maybe you can't quite afford that enormous 3D printer that you're after, but you can modify your current machine to expand the build volume like with an Ender Extender Kit. And maybe you don't really have space for multiple machines to do multiple specialities. Maybe you can explore some of the manual tool head changing systems such as the X-Change. This will let you experiment with some truly unique capabilities without giving up the standard functionality of your 3D printer. I personally have an issue here when managing time, frequently taking on new projects when old ones aren't finished and others aren't even started. I have making videos for this channel as an excuse, but you do have to answer honestly. If you've been through all of these questions and the answer is still yes, then here's some considerations. Alrighty, let's get serious. What category of 3D printer do you want? I established some categories in the previous buyer's guide, which we'll quickly revisit. First up, we have our budget machines. Generally, these are Chinese, and in this case, they suit those who are looking for a project or a tinkering hobby. Think Ender 3s, their clones, and equivalent machines. Next up from that, we had our mid-range machines. Same manufacturers, but perhaps a little bit bigger, or maybe with something specific, such as an IDEX. You'll pay more money here for that extra build volume or whatever those extra features are. We have our manufacturer supported machines, which can vary wildly in price. For a long time, this segment has been dominated by Prusa, and for more money, perhaps Lulzbot and Ultimaker. More recently, another manufacturer in Bamboo Lab has entered this space with the P1P and X1 Carbon. You will pay more for these printers compared to budget machines, but the whole point is to get peace of mind because they actually supply customer service and support as a safety net. My final category is premium build-it-yourself Core XY kits. I have built some of these on the channel, such as the Second SK Tank and the Ratrig V Core 3. I'm very satisfied with both, but be warned, you do need to build every component of the printer, and this can take a while. This includes printing parts, frame assembly, all of the wiring, and installing and configuring the firmware. If you're looking for quick and easy, head the other way, but if you're looking for a project, you'll likely be very satisfied. The printer that you already use probably already falls into one of these categories. So you might be wondering, should you stick to what you know or should you try something new? Let's say your first 3D printer was an Ender 3, you've modified it, you know it well and you're fairly happy with it. So should you stick with another Creality model because you think you'll have a smoother transition? Brand loyalty is one thing, but there are actual implications to this question. For instance, if you switch manufacturers, Will you also have to change slicing software and how steep will the learning curve be? If the control interface is completely different from your old printer to your new, will you become frustrated because you can't find the features and functions that you're used to? That's the question my patron Andy, who requested this video, had when looking to build on his Ender 3 V2. Andy summed it up well. So many people I talk to have a bunch of the same brand that was the very first printer they bought because by the time they figured that printer out, not only did they like it, but honestly, there's a little apprehension that you're going to spend a thousand bucks or 500 bucks on another device you'll have to learn, and maybe it's completely different to run. The answer to this question will depend on your goals. If you're running a print farm or using your 3D printers for profit, it probably makes sense to stick to what you know, because any time you lose learning new systems, it's potentially lost revenue. However, if your 3D printing is largely a hobby, and you utilize it mainly for enjoyment, then I would suggest expanding your knowledge by learning some different approaches will be enjoyable and beneficial. And this is exactly what Andy found. I found switching from Prusa from Ender 3 was 10 times easier than I thought it was going to be. Enough of the language and information carried over that even though the settings and setup and running it is slightly different, it is nowhere near as drastically different than I had assumed. He did point out one potential gotcha, that you can get from having quite different machines. It's something I can relate to, having a Prusa Mini with a 0.2 nozzle, perfect for small detailed parts, and a CR10 Max with a much larger nozzle. Great for pumping out functional parts quickly. Select the wrong profile in your slicer, and you're gonna be turning your 3D printer into a spaghetti maker. For the most part, however, issues will be entirely predictable and manageable. The knowledge you've built from your current 3D printer will apply to any others. Unless you're starting out with resin, which is almost like starting over, and I recommend this video. It's impossible to cover every scenario, but hopefully the talking points in this video provide some food for thought. Thank you to my patron Andy for requesting this video. Thank you for watching, and please comment below the correct number of printers for the average person to ensure happy 3D printing. 
G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.